going to ask everyone to just rise up quickly. And we do this in um, gratitude today because we want to welcome Pastor Jeanette up, who's going to minister to us today. And uh, I believe you're going to be blessed today. Amen. She's got a teaching anointing and she's confident in the Lord. And I believe, let's say welcome, Pastor Jeanette. <laughs> Thank you so much. You thanks. Okay. Oh, thanks. The topic today is facing your giants. I would like to just share a very short testimony, a beautiful testimony. Um, I have reached the ranks, the wonderful ranks of being a grandma. And um, this week, Wednesday, my fourth grandchild was born, a beautiful little girl. Uh, the testimony I want to give is actually more my daughter's than mine, uh, but she shared it with me. Um, she says as she was, she had a cesarean section, and as she was going, as they were leading her away, and she was in the theatre, the the Lord ministered to her and said to her, "The devil is going to come and try and disrupt things here, but trust me." And um, as they did the cesarean section, they struggled a little bit to take the little baby girl out. And when she was out, she didn't breathe. Um, the doctors were all excited and chattering, and then suddenly everything was silent. And you could see uh, she was fairly aware um, that everyone suddenly was very silent, and she reminded, remembered what the Lord said. And then she just was calm she prayed in the spirit she just allowed the lord to minister to her she was not faced she did not allow what the satan tried to come and steal from her she didn't allow that to affect her she just prayed in the spirit and the next moment that baby started screaming so praise the lord that was absolutely awesome so god is so faithful when we truly trust him and allow him to minister to us all right, what are the giants you are facing today and I? Because Jesus never promised us that we're going to have a walk of roses. Jesus never promised us that everything is going to be okay. And so often we do hear that. And then people are very disappointed when the difficult times come. But Jesus said, no, that things are going to be difficult. You are going to be persecuted. So we do have giants in our lives. Maybe it's financial struggles. Maybe it's a job or a business loss. Maybe your marriage is falling apart. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a dreaded disease. Maybe it's fear of death. Maybe it's addictions or other. You know what you go through. You know what you're facing on a daily basis. Now let's look at what David did. How did David face his giant? In 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 we read, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And all those gathered here will know that means all of us as well, that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So David had the confidence. He trusted God. You could hear he was speaking in the authority that we received again this morning. So he spoke in the authority. And this was David's strategy. Let's look at those two verses. When you analyze it, we get to the strategy of David. First of all, David knew God. He respected, honored, and worshipped God. He believed in God. He trusted God. He faced the giant in the name of the Lord of hosts. No, not in his own name, in the name of the Lord of hosts. He declared God's weapons, and God's weapons are not a sword or a spear. And he declared the battle is the Lord's. That's something we need to remember. The battle is not ours. As Dr. Teresa ministered here this morning, 
we don't need to go and defend ourselves. God will def defend us. What then should our strategy be? First of all, we must know who God is. By reading God's word, we will get to know God. God reveals himself to man through his word. So our Bible is our sword. We need to become very intimate with the word of God. God re reveals himself to man through his word. We get to know God's attributes. And here I use the words of the song because this is such a beautiful summary of some of God's attributes. Not everything, just a few. God is creator. He is our provider. He is our protector. He's our savior. He is our miracle worker. He is our promise keeper. He is our light in the darkness. And these are all revealed through his word. We get to know what he did and what he still does. So the word of God is such an important part of our lives. And then the second point, we must respect God's word. In Isaiah 62, 66 verse 2b, it says, These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word, that fear of God, trusting him, honoring him and respecting him. John 14 says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. His teaching is the word. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Such a beautiful promise. I just want to read it again. It says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we, that's God. Jesus who will come to them and make our home with them. Such a beautiful promise. Then number three, we must believe in God. That's a requirement. As we heard earlier today, twice we've heard, when we want to receive the blessing, there is a requirement. There are requirements that God expects from us. So when we read in um in Hebrews 11, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is trusting God, although we can't see. We're trusting him because we know that he is sure. And then in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever comes to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Again, we see God is a God of rewards. When we obey, when we love, he rewards. And that is how God works. That is how he does. That's his requirement from us, obedience, and we receive and that is such a wonderful promise. Then he says, we must trust in God. Now, that's not always easy. Eh? That's not always easy. So we must trust in God. In Jeremiah 32, it says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. That means all, of all of us. Is there anything too difficult for me? Isn't this so beautiful? Nothing is impossible for God. He repeats this in, in the New Testament. So nothing is impossible for God. So we need to have that word grow in our hearts. We must believe it because God's word is faithful. God's word is true. It will never return void. And Psalms 9 verse 10 says, Those who know your name. Trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. And I think we can all testify to that. The Lord has never left us alone. Might have felt like it, but he gives us a promise, and God always keeps his promises. And then we see the fifth point, 
as David did, we must face our giants in the name of the Lord so we don't have to go and fight our battles by ourselves. We were never called to come and fight our battles by ourselves. In Joshua 1 verse 9, I love this verse, have I not commanded you? Again, a command. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So yes, those emotions are going to build up in us. They are going to be there, but we've got to take authority over those emotions because God promises us that he will never leave us. So we need to silence those emotions. We need to, even if you have to speak it out loud, bind it, say, that is not what I have to do. God promises me. So we've got to speak the word of God and we need to believe it. And then in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And in that different translation, it says, cast your burdens onto Jesus. And those who come to prayer meetings and um, you know that I know Pastor Dean also loves to sing that song, cast your burdens unto Jesus for he cares for you. So that is what Jesus does. He cares for us. And when we trust him, we can cast our burdens onto him. We can give our burdens to him. So what do we war against? Now, this is very important because when we are in the middle of all of this, then sometimes we, we think it's against this person. We think it's against our husband. We think it's about against our colleague. But what does the word say? Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we cannot fight this battle in the natural. And remember, as I said, you might feel that it is your husband or a child or a colleague, but it's not. The devil has a greater plan, and not a good plan, but a great plan to bring destruction and distraction. So we've got to use God's weapons. As David said, don't come with you with a spear and a javelin and a sword. We've got to come to, to this. We must be prepared, wearing God's, having God's weapons. And what is God's weapon? In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5, it says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Strongholds are in our minds, mindsets. So, and you can't, you can't take a sword and remove that stronghold. It is God's word and his spirit that will remove that. Hey? We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And this just reminds me again of the scripture in Proverbs 3, which I'm, I don't have here, but it says, it says, um, do not lean on your own understanding, because when we lean on our own understanding, we start thinking different things. And, you know, we, we see the, the problem, what it initially was, and how it ends up to look because I've been thinking of it and leaning on my own understanding, it's totally not what it is. So I'm fooling myself or I'm getting myself up in a knot and that is not what it should be. So what we need to grow up, we need to take responsibility even for our thoughts. Because Jesus, the word says, we've got to take it captive. So you've got to take those thoughts captive and bring it under the obedience of the word of God. So when those thoughts come into your mind, you need to say to yourself, self, stop it. This is what God's word says. So you need to actually take the action and you need to use God's word to grow, to change that mindset. 
All right. Okay. We also are instructed to put God's armor on daily. And um, I just want to share something here. I think I might have shared it. But children often say to me, Mommy, we're the only adults who ever drive in the car with you that still has to put on the armor of God. But when we get into the car, we put on the armor. When they're with me, they've got to put it on with me. But it's such a good habit. But it's, you know, we do it in the physical, in the natural. We speak it. But it's got such power in the spirit. So it's very important that we do it. And what is the armor of God? Let us look. Ephesians 6, verse 13 to 17. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, when, it doesn't say if, it says when, that is a sure thing. It's going to come. You may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand Stand firm then with a belt of truth locked, buckled around your waist so the truth, so you've got to measure whatever comes your way, is it truth? With a breastplate of righteousness in place, Jesus gave us that righteousness. So we have that breastplate there to protect our emotions, to protect our hearts. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So you have that shoes of peace. Let God's Peace guide you, not your own understanding. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith in with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, all those things that come your direction. When you have your shield of faith, when they come your way, you can say, no, that's not true. That's not true. I block it. That's not my portion. So you have the authority to speak the word of God, to grow, to be strong. Because if we don't stop those things, everything that comes to us, it's going to cause a lot of turmoil in our minds. So we need to stay focused. We need to de de be filled with the word of God so that we can speak it in every situation. And um, then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So the helmet of salvation, when we put that on, we have the mind of Christ. We speak the words of Christ and not allow ourselves to be influenced by things uh, and theories and statements from the world, but that we will allow the word of God that be, to be the only thing that influences what we think. And the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we cannot be equipped. Our sword must be, the word says, our word, the sword, the word is the sword, sharper than a two-edged sword. But your sword cannot be sharp if you do not read your word. And then I read something beautiful the other day. I read an article and um, the person described it says, when we use the word of God as a sword, the two-edged side is when we speak it, it cuts one side. And as we speak it, it is repeated. It is the word of God. So God fulfills it. That is why it is a two-edged sword. So that is very important to put on your armor. And then, so let us look at the weapons of our warfare. So we have been prepared now. We know what we need to do. So we're going to look. There are seven weapons that we use in our battle. It says the word of God, prayer, prayer worship, the name of Jesus, fasting, our testimony, and thanksgiving. So I'm going to go a little bit in detail with that now. But do you see anything there about fighting back, having a gun, using a sword, except the sword of the Spirit? So can you see God is equipping us through the Word Yes, David had to physically fight because it was a physical battle he was fighting. But ours is a spiritual battle. So let's look at what it says about the word of God, our sword. In Isaiah 55 verse 6 it says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth. Sorry, that's it, verse 11. 
it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Family, this is such an important scripture, such an important verse. And I have to tell you, um, I've heard this verse many, many times. And for a very long time, I did not have the revelation. And then one night, uh, just more than a year ago, we were having our prayer meeting here, and Pastor Shami read the scripture to us. And she was just sharing, and as we were praying, and suddenly the Lord just gave me that revelation. So this is a scripture I stand upon on a daily basis. So please, it's verse 11, not 6, okay? So... Remember, God's word cannot return empty. When we speak it, it cannot come back empty because God had created it. It is full of him. It is full of his power. And when we speak it, it has to happen. So we need to align our thoughts, our faith, our trust with God's word. And then you will see how effective God's word is. So how do I use God's word then to fight my battle? Find scriptures that address your giants and declare these scriptures often and believe it. Because in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you read it and say it out loud, the more it settles in your spirit and your faith grows. Okay, second part is prayer. Ephesians 6 verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. How do we pray? In the spirit. That is such a powerful weapon that God has given us because no one can interfere in that language when you pray in the spirit and it is powerful with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people so we've got to get over that point of selfish prayers just me and my little shopping list we are called to be intercessors. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our pastors. We need to pray for our leaders. Because if we do not pray, nothing can happen. God responds to prayers. So we need to pray. So prayer is more important than food, people. The word of God, reading the word, praying, those are important. And when we pray scripture, it makes it even more powerful. All right, the third thing is worship. In John 4, 23, we read, Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So it's not about show. It's not just about doing it when people can see you. This is an intimate part of our daily relationship with the Lord, is that worship. And it reminds me of that song. I don't know what the title is, but then we sing, this is how I fight my battles. You know that song? You hear it? Because when we worship, look at what happened when, 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 the, when the Israelites were walking around Jericho. They were walking, but it was an act of worship. Walls come tumbling down. So worship is powerful, and the devil has nothing against it. He can't. All right. The power of the name of Jesus. In Philippians 2, verse 9 to 11, Therefore God exalted him, that's Jesus, to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That tells me there's a place under the earth. We know about that place. Eh? And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
So the name of Jesus is so powerful in every situation. If you cannot pray, if you are at a point where you can't do anything else and you call out the name of Jesus, he will show up. He will show up. If that's all you can do, he will show up. And then fasting. Now, this is a very intimate decision. It's a decision you've got to take in prayer. You pray. You speak to the Lord. And when we read here, now, um, the context here, uh, we read that Mark 9, 29 says, And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This was about deliverance to people. When you need deliverance, it's time to fast. It's time to spend that time in the presence of the Lord and ask him to guide you. Because when we fast, we humble ourselves before God. And this is how bondages are broken. And then our testimony. Oh, powerful testimonies. Revelations 12 verse 11 a, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, we all have seen the effect that our personal testimonies can have to those around us. But our testimonies also builds us up. So when we go through a tough, difficult time, then it's time to remind you yourself of those wonderful things that Jesus has done for you, that God has done for you, how God has gotten you out of those situations, because that will remind you, it will build your faith, and then you can trust the Lord. It can give you that, just that extra that you need at that stage. And then a big one, Thanksgiving. Thessalonians 5 verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And um, here I want to remind you, when God says in his word, be thankful in all circumstances, it means all. Whether you're going through tough, or whether it's going better, or if it's going good, we need to be grateful. Because you know what? When we go through those difficult times, we are busy building character. We are learning to trust the Lord more. So we can face those giants with thanksgiving. So thanksgiving is God's will for us. In all circumstances, we should be obedient and give him our thanks in everything. Then... The battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel 17. All those gathered here, this is again David's words, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord says, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. I want you to say after me, the battle is the Lord's and I have to stand and trust him and do all those previous things, okay? So I hope you wrote them down, but you will hear it. It is going to be on the recording. So please remind yourselves. And, you know, as I was doing this, I reminded myself again as well of what we need to do so that we can be equipped. So... This is how we face our giants. Amen. Let us pray. Abba Father, I just thank you that you never leave us as orphans. You never, never leave us alone. You equip us in every situation. So I thank you for your word that is so powerful. Father God, I pray that each one of us will walk in that faith, that we will declare your word, that we will use your word in every situation, that we will trust you and that we will be grateful in every situation, Father God. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your blessings. And I thank you for your ministering today in Jesus' name. Amen.